Welcome everyone, my name is Sylph, and this is my attempt to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Fire Red with only the legendary Pokemon Mewtwo. Those of you familiar with my channel know that we normally do hardcore Nuzlocke with just one type of Pokemon, but I've had this idea of trying to only use one single Pokemon for a while now, and today we're gonna attempt it. Obviously, we're going to need quite a strong Pokemon if we're going to have any hope at this, and I figured what better Pokemon than the Gen 1 god himself, Mewtwo. This kind of run puts legendary Pokemon to the ultimate test to see just how powerful they are in their respective game's hardest challenge. How will this challenge work though? I'm glad you asked. The full rule set for this run is listed down below, but put simply, only one Mewtwo can be caught. If Mewtwo faints at any point, the entire run is immediately over. No items except held items are allowed in battle. Mewtwo's level is limited to the next gym leader or the final league member's ace. And finally, of course, only Mewtwo can be sent into battle at any time. Today's video is brought to you by some of our friends who could be described as legends in their own right, those at Chimera. For those of you who don't know, Chimera is an ethical and sustainable clothing brand that has been immensely popular with our audience. What can I say? The Self Squad has some good taste. Chimera's got some incredibly unique designs and finds an amazing balance between quality, reasonable pricing, and fair labor, vetting their entire supply chain for ethical and sustainable manufacturing. In the past, I've shown you guys some of their amazing graphic tees, and with the weather getting colder, I'm happy to let you know that they've also got some amazing hoodies and sweatshirts too. In addition to some newly released long sleeve shirts with 100% ring spun cotton for extra softness in addition to a tapered design to complement all body types. My personal favorites gotta be the Heather True Royal. I mean, come on, this design is like it was made for our channel. Right, Kingdra? Yeah, boy! Not only does Chimera have great products and prices, but also great service too. Orders $60 or more get free shipping in the US, and there's also a satisfaction guarantee with the full return policy. Click the link down in the description below to check out their site and some more designs that they have. And make sure to let me know which ones you're fond of. Thanks to the team at Chimera for sponsoring this video, and let's get into the run. It's time, the remakes of the first ever Pokemon games, and I have no idea how this will go. My guess is it'll kind of get harder and harder as the game goes on, but who knows. Hold on, since when does Professor Oak have a golem of all things? Ooh, good morning, Mom. I can't wait to spend the day with you. Right. All boys leave home someday. I... Mom? I, I'm not going anywhere, I just get the f*** out. With my life thrown into chaos, I decide to talk to the one person that I can always count on. The guy who's in almost every game talking about how far science has taken us. Technology is incredible. You can now give up your soul to the metaverse. <laughs> Professor Oak, please help me. My grandson's gonna slap the shit out of you at the league. Now, you're probably wondering how we're gonna get the legendary Mewtwo. Well, that's easy. Professor Oak just gives it to you. Gosh, have you never played Fire Red before? Alright, just kidding. This is totally the work of the Universal Pokemon Randomizer. What else is there to name Mewtwo other than Frieza, who ends up having a naive nature which gives it plus speed and minus special defense? Not bad. Blue immediately challenges us to battle, and after Frieza obliterates him, he says, Unbelievable, I picked the wrong Pokemon. <laughs> no kidding, yes you did. Up ahead in Viridian, we meet a man after my own heart who loves his coffee. He then forces us into watching him catch a Pokemon, and... God, that coffee is not doing a thing to help him out. We quickly arrive in Viridian Forest where we can start testing out Mewtwo in battle, and weirdly enough, the Caterpies in here actually survived confusion, which came as quite a surprise. Can't say the same about their brother Weedles though, that's for sure. After permanently demoralizing a forest full of bug catchers, we arrive in Pewter City where the first gym is. This gym is not too worrisome for us, as rock types generally have a low special defense stat, although the first trainers Geodude and Sandshrew both took two hits to take down. The first gym leader is none other than Brock, and I leveled Mewtwo up only to level 10 heading into this battle, even though the level cap is level 14. And this is for a particular reason. Keep in mind that for this challenge, we'll only have one Pokemon, meaning all the XP we get goes to it, and we can't overlevel. The experience share is also only available if you catch 50 Pokemon, which would obviously violate our rules, so we have to be extra careful, but again, I think this gym is a good place to get away with not using too much XP. He leads with a level 12 Geodude, and he actually does survive a confusion in the red, but just uses Tackle, which doesn't do much at all, so another one finishes him off. 
His second and final Pokemon is Onix, who gets hit to just about half, but then he hits us with Rock Tomb, which also lowers our speed. Now, Onix is surprisingly quick and outspeeds us on the next turn now, but just went for Tackle so we can slam him with one more confusion for the win and our first badge. Can't say I wasn't expecting an easy W there, but that's probably about the easiest we'll have things. While leaving Pewter, we're stopped by one of Professor Oak's aides who says, I've been asked to deliver this, so here you go. And it turns out to be running shoes. So you mean these, not this. Stay in school, kids. B but I'm a scientist. I have three PhD. Shut up. On Route 3, we can find a hidden Orenberry, which I'm thrilled about. Ooh, wow, Sylph, you found an Orenberry. What are you going to do, make love to it? Oh, come on. Fire Red is relentless in giving you hardly any held items at all, so these things are hard to come by. Our trek through Mount Moon brings us to a crucial item, the Thief TM. I go to teach it to Frieza, and he can't learn it. Whoop. No type boosting held items for us, I guess. Ultimate Pokemon, my ass. Before leaving, we can pick up yet another god Pokemon by grabbing the Helix Fossil. What? Technically, I'll be using it as an HM Pokemon. How else are we going to use Surf? Now, upon exiting Mount Moon comes perhaps one of the most crucial things in the game for us. These two goofball karate dudes. I get one of them to teach Mega Punch to Mewtwo, as this is going to be the only non-resisted move we have against Misty's Starmie that's upcoming. You should go before you're seen by the misguided fool who trains only his silly kicking over there. Whoa. Are you gonna take that, my dude? And his name is John C. With that, we arrive in Cerulean City, the location of the second gym. Hey, hey Mewtwo, you see that? That cave over there? That's where you'd be stuck if I didn't adopt you. Yeah, you're welcome. Before the gym, I decide to take on Blue at the Nugget Bridge, who at this point I don't think will pose much of a threat to us. He leads with his Pidgeotto, and the main worry here is Sand Attack, and after Confusion brings him below half, he did indeed use it. We then get hit by Quick Attack before thankfully hitting him with another to take him down. In comes Rattata next, and we miss our first attack, but he just uses Tail Whip. We miss our second Confusion too, and he hits us with Tackle, but then we can one-hit KO him with a third. Squirtle then comes out, and we miss again, but he just went for Tail Whip as well. Then we hit him for just about half before getting hit by Tackle, but another does the job. His final Pokemon is Abra, which would resist Confusion, but this is where Mega Punch comes in handy, ending that thing's hopes and dreams. A solid battle despite the accuracy nonsense. It's time for the Cerulean Gym, led by Gym Leader Misty, a Water Trainer. On the face of it, that type doesn't seem too bad, but we can't forget that her Starmie is also part Psychic type, meaning it resists our same type attack bonus or stab moves. Regardless, that's why I put Mega Punch on Mewtwo, and I also attached a Person Berry on him from Route 4 ahead of time to prevent confusion from Water Pulse. She leads with a level 18 Staryu, and again, I'm playing it safe with the level cap with Frieza at level 19. Confusion just barely doesn't take her out on like 1 HP, but she just went for Harden. This isn't actually a bad thing though, as it forces her to use her Super Potion early, and another two attacks do the job, with us not taking any damage. In comes Starmie next, and I hit it with Mega Punch for about a third, and then she hits us with Water Pulse for a quarter. Regardless, she has Recover and could confuse us after our berry, so I try to play it safe by outspeeding and using Disable so she can hardly do any damage with only Swift, but we miss and she gets the Recover off. Oof. I go for Mega Punch again, and then she hits another Water Pulse to bring us to a third. Uh-oh. We then miss Disable again and she recovers yet again. Oh no. We then miss Mega Punch on the next turn and get hit down to just 10 HP. It's now or never. And Disable does work, we get a Mega Punch off, but now we're still within range of a Swift, and she takes us down with it. Unbelievable. I literally chose Mega Punch over Mega Kick because it has higher accuracy. What the hell, man? It wasn't until after this battle that I realized Disable has a 55% accuracy in this game, compared to the 100% accuracy it's had for the past four generations and 80% in Gen 4, which I thought was always the case before that. I never knew it was so damn bad, dear lord. Regardless, we lost the run and that's a wipe, meaning we have to complete the entire game to this point again from the start with a brand new Mewtwo. This time, I decided to nickname it Jiren, more powerful than Frieza and all, and this time we got a hardy nature, which is neutral. Now, knowing Disable is trash now, it's time to go for it again. This time, I decided to risk it and level up to 20, and now Jiren one-hit KOs Staryu immediately. In comes the big threat, and I use Mega Punch, and we miss our first attack! Dear lord, why? Then our second one misses as well. 
what is going on? With us already at half health, we finally get a move off, and then we get taken to just 23 HP. Another Mega Punch brings her very low, but then she uses Recover. We repeat that process a couple times, and eventually she hits us with another Water Pulse. We survive on just 5 HP, but we get confused, but our Barry heals us, and I was like, yes! But Mega Punch somehow doesn't KO with her having like 1 HP, and then she slams us to death with one final attack. I want to cry. Alright, third time's the charm, right? This time we've got Brawly, also with a neutral nature, this time bashful. Staryu gets slammed with a critical hit right off the bat, nice, and in comes Starmie. For once, we hit a damn Mega Punch right off the bat and we start outdoing her, although it uses Recover again. We got brought to half and confused at one point, but our berry saved us and this time we didn't miss a single attack, so Brawly emerges victorious over this absolute f of a gym leader. Man oh man, I knew Starmie would be tough with its typing and all, but wow, I was not expecting that at all. Up ahead on Route 25, we can finally get a new TM to use, Secret Power, which has slightly less power than Mega Punch, but 100% accuracy and a chance for status, so I think it's a much better option. You know, Bill, I really think you should leave the Pokemon experimentation to Dr. Fuji and Blaine. They were able to create the legendary monster we're currently in possession of, whereas you... Well, need I say more? After that nonsense, we arrive in Vermilion City, and after avoiding as many trainers as possible, Mewtwo's still already at low level 22, so I'm getting worried about the next level cap. We still have to board the SSN, after all, where there are a ton of trainers. Thankfully, though, you can actually skip through almost all of it straight towards another rival battle with Blue. At this point, his team still hasn't developed into a form that I'm scared of, as the main issue is still Sand Attack. His Pidgeotto does survive a confusion and hits us with it, but from there we only missed a couple of times against his War Turtle, which just used Withdraw for some reason. So after getting hit with a Bite from it, and also a Hyper Fang from his Raticate, which has survived in the red, we can also take down his Kadabra now that we have a more reliable non-resistant move in Secret Power. Permanently killing his Raticate feels good, but I do worry about what he's going to replace it with. That win allows us to finally see the captain of the ship, who also happens to be the Cutmaster. It turns out he wants a massage in exchange for the HM, and well, we really have no other option. Ah. Uh... With that, we can now access the Vermilion City Gym thanks to our newly caught Meowth, who I nicknamed Miss Cut. Don't judge the name, she'll kill us both. This gym puzzle is the absolute worst, and my average time of completion is probably 3 hours. But I had an insane speed run this time and finished it in literally 23 seconds. Take that, game freak. There's just one forced trainer in here, and incredibly we defeat him just under the level cap. I was very worried about that. The third gym leader is Lieutenant Surge, an Electro-type gym leader, and I don't find myself too worried about him. He leads with a Voltorb, and he actually barely survives confusion in the red before lowering our defense with Screech. After he uses a Super Potion, our next attack gets a high roll to KO him. In comes Pikachu next, who is an instant one-hit KO with confusion. Nice. His final Pokemon is Raichu, and this thing tanks confusion with just about half, and then paralyzes us. He now outspeeds us and goes for double team of all things, and I'm like, uh-oh. We do indeed miss our next attack, and he hits us with Shockwave, but not only do we hit our confusion through paralysis and low accuracy, but it gets a high enough roll to KO him from half. Whew. That could have been real damn bad with paralysis plus lowered accuracy. I was feeling pretty good about our exploits so far, but then remembered we have to make our way through the rock tunnel, and without Flash, since you need to catch 10 Pokemon to get the damn HM in the first place. Ugh. 17 hours later, and we finally reach the exit to be greeted by the hellhole that is Lavender Town. Come to think of it, less than 2% of the Gen 1 Pokemon were ghost types, there were just 3 in total, so did they really have to create an entire creepy ass town to haunt us for the rest of our lives? Leeing for my life, we arrive in the more peaceful Celadon City. Our first task is to grab the coin case from this guy who just ruined his life gambling. This allows us to use the game corner, but we can't really afford hardly any coins at all at the moment. And the problem with this run is that we can't just battle with trainers like crazy for money because of the level cap, and I have spent way too many hours grinding in the game corner to even consider going for like 2 or 3 TMs. And they won't really be useful until later anyway. With that said, it's time to head to the next gym, the Celadon Gym, and... Heh <laughs> heh, this gym is great. It's full of women. Ugh, what a creep. This gym's not looking too bad. Ooh, damn, girl. 
<clears throat> anyway, the trainers mostly have part poison types, so Brawly's able to smash through them with relative ease. It's time for the fourth gym leader, Erica, and because her main threats are also part poison type, I was feeling pretty good about this. She leads with a victory bell, and somehow it survives a super effective stab confusion with just a sliver, then hits us with stun spore. She then hyper potions, and we bring her to the red yet again, and because of the paralysis, she now outspeeds us and hits us with Giga Drain. Thankfully, we break through confusion to finally KO that damn thing. In comes Tangela next, which actually does its job and gets one hit KO'd by confusion after hitting us to just above half with Giga Drain. Her final Pokemon is Vileplume, and it of course outspeeds us with Giga Drain to hit us low, and we stay paralyzed. Oh no. Another hit brings us to just 9 HP, and we finally hit a Confusion, but it doesn't KO, but it does Confuse. Oh man, this is it. We both have status ailments of some sort, it all depends on who outrolls who, but she does outspeed us, but Erica decides to use a full heal, and then we break through Paralysis for the KO. Holy, that was unbelievably close. I don't even think I knew that she had full heals, but damn am I thankful that she used one. The odds of her hitting herself in confusion and then us breaking through paralysis would have been pretty low. But we got the W and through the skin of our teeth. With four badges in hand, we can now visit the stupid tea lady who tends to confuse me because in the originals you get the drinks for the guards atop the department store instead. See, this guy agrees with me. She gave him a third degree burn. Speaking of the department store rooftop, in this game the girl here gives you the light screen and reflect TMs, which I thought I'd note in case you guys are ever pursuing your own challenge. The game corner hideout is up next, and Brawly performs amazingly since they mostly have poison types, although that's not to say that we didn't have some close calls due to poison. Down here we also have our first battle against the infamous Giovanni. Alright, I just have to ask, why do you hate me so much, Mr. Evil Wizard Man? I've spent decades planning Team Rocket's rise to power, and the key to it all is the Sylph Company. Then you come along and create a whole brand around the name. It was supposed to be mine. Hmm. Battle for the name? You're on. Giovanni leads with an Onyx, and Confusion absolutely wipes the floor with it immediately. In comes his Kangaskhan next, and Confusion does about a third before he hits us with Bite. The next brings him low, and then he just uses Tail Whip so another can take him down. I feel like a Fake Out and then Mega Punch combo could have been dangerous for us, so I don't know why he went for Bite since it's a special move in this game. Oh well. From there, his Rhyhorn is a one-hit too, winning us the battle and the copyright over the Sylph name. Oh, I, Mr. Giovanni, sir, you, you seem to have dropped the Sylph sc- Fuck off. Back in the hellish Lavender Town, we have to make our way through the tower where people are mourning their fallen Pokémon. Why did you die, Growlithe? Yeah, what the fuck is wrong with you, buddy? In here we get to battle Blue again, and I went into this battle thinking, ah, we're over-leveled compared to him, this'll be easy. Pidgeotto hits us with Quick Attack, and then Confusion is a one-hit KO. So far, so good. War Turtle then comes out and survives a Confusion, and then hits us with Bite before we can take it out as well. Growlithe is then a one-hit KO, but one thing I didn't consider is the Intimidate. This lowers the power of our secret power since all normal moves are physical in this game and, well, I was planning to use it for his last Pokemon, a new one, Execute. Not to mention it's not like we can switch out to get rid of the Intimidate stat drop anyway. Secret power now does less than half and he hits a Hypnosis. Not good. He then uses Confusion for some reason and confuses us while we're asleep. He then lands a Leech Seed. This is not good. We can't even switch out to get rid of it. He's getting recovery while we're losing health, asleep, and confused. After our Orenberry, we eventually wake up though, hit him with secret power, and it paralyzes him. Oh, he then can't move. Leech Seed is bringing us really low, but then we break through confusion to hit him really low. He then misses confusion, and we survive Leech Seed with just 24 HP to take him down. Unreal. But he has one more Pokemon left, and we need to one-hit KO it with a lowered attack from Intimidate. But miraculously, we do, with just 10 HP remaining. That was one of the most insane things I've ever seen. So much for it being a breeze. More poison nonsense made rescuing Mr. Fuji a daunting task, but we eventually make it to him. I mean, come on, he helped create the Pokemon that we're using, I think we owe him one. Realizing how much we need it, and with the gates now open, I decide to head to Saffron early to unlock what might be the key to this entire run. Mr. Psychic, the legend who gives you the Psychic TM. Mewtwo doesn't learn it until level 66 otherwise, so this is a blessing. I'm on a relaxing ride on my new bike with my girlfriend. 
We're going riding together on our new bikes. My dudes, you're like four years old. And who the hell are you? Getting psychic was definitely good timing, as now we can avoid any self-destruct nonsense on Cycling Road, which is definitely a big danger for Nuzlocks. In no time, we arrive at Fuchsia City, the location of the next gym. Before we hit it up, though, I've heard a lot about the legendary Safari Warden, so let's go visit him. After getting both the Golden Teeth and the Surf HM from the Safari Zone, and then the Strength HM from the non-stroke version of the Warden, it's time to hit up the Fuchsia City Gym. Now, I had imagined we'd sweep through this place, but I forgot that most of the trainers actually have Psychic-type Pokémon, so this dude with like 5 Drowsy nearly ended our run since having only one Pokémon and getting poisoned is brutal in addition to their bulk. The fifth gym leader is the poison type trainer Koga, and the level cap for both him and Sabrina is 43, so I figured we'd come in here a bit underleveled. As it turns out, Mewtwo and Psychic is a brutal combination, absolutely sweeping through his entire team with ease. I was a bit worried about Muck's bulk, but we annihilated that stupid minimizing piece of crap. Sorry, bad experiences with him. Now one thing that had slipped my mind is that the Saffron Gym is actually locked until you defeat Team Rocket at Sylphco, which I really didn't take into account when it comes to our leveling. I was extraordinarily cautious not to battle like any trainers though, so we arrive at Blue at high level 40. Before the battle, I was desperately trying to think of a way that we could handle Execute better, and I came to realize that Mewtwo can be taught the Aerial Ace TM. I also put a Chesto Berry on him to avoid Hypnosis this time. His now fully evolved Pidgeot is up to start, and Psychic just barely doesn't KO, but Wing Attack doesn't do too much on us and we can KO him with another. In comes Blastoise out of nowhere next, Psychic does about half, and then Bite does a good chunk before we can KO it as well. He then sends out Growlithe next, great, another Intimidate, but it goes down to one Psychic. In comes the big threat, Execute, and Aerialize does do over half thankfully, but he hits a Stun Spore on us this time. Why didn't you use Hypnosis this time? Ugh. He then hits us with confusion, but we don't get confused this time and break through paralysis to take him down. Alakazam is his final Pokemon and he just went for Future Sight, so then I hit him with Secret Power and it paralyzed him, so now we outspeed him despite also being paralyzed. Incredible. Our final battle before the next gym is against Giovanni, and now that he has two poison types and we have Psychic, it's an even easier process, taking down his Nidorino and Nidoqueen instantly, and then he plays terribly with Kangaskhan again, using Rage instead of using Fake Out and a Mega Punch combo. Weird stuff, but I'm not complaining, as we then take out the Rhyhorn in one shot. The man who claims to be the president of my company then gives us a Master Ball, but says, You should be quiet about using it, though. Uh... Why? Now, as you probably noticed, we ended that battle at just about level 43 already. But our saving grace is that in the Saffron Gym, you don't actually need to battle a single trainer if you take the right path carefully enough, so we make it to the 6th Gym Leader, Sabrina, just in time. She leaves with a Kadabra, and Secret Power gets a crit to smash it to bits. Venomoth is then weak to Psychic, kind of ironic for a Psychic trainer, and goes down in one hit. Mr. Mime comes out next, and Secret Power does indeed fail to KO, but she just used Barrier, which only increases Mr. Mime's defense and not the team's, so we can then KO it. Alakazam comes out next, Secret Power brings it to a third or so, but then she just uses Calm Mind, so another does the job. Not bad at all. <coughs> Listen up, b****. You're all lucky I have a level cap, or else I'd put you through what Sabrina put you through times ten. With that out of the way, let's check how our Pokémon are do- Oh, now you give us a cherry berry from pickup. A little while later and we arrive on Cinnabar Island where the 7th gym is located and where Mewtwo has a troubled history. Here we can also revive our Helix fossil. Lord Helix has officially arrived, so now we can't lose. Next up, the Pokemon Mansion. So, Mewtwo, uh, this book is about your creation. You see, when a mommy and daddy love each other a lot, they- Leading into the 7th gym, something occurred to me. Psychic won't kill either Rapidash or Arcanine, and between Bites, Fire Blasts, and Fire Spins, this could go bad. I came up with a plan, though. I head back to the game corner in Celadon to purchase none other than the Mystic Water item. Yes, to boost water moves. You'll see why. Back at the gym, while taking on the trainers, Brawly learns Recover, which should be an immense help in tricky situations. Before Blaine, I decide to teach Mewtwo both the Rain Dance and Water Pulse TMs. Seems crazy, I know, but I sincerely think it's our only hope. Let's see if this works. He leads with a Growlithe, but this time Intimidate doesn't really matter. I take this opportunity to set up Rain Dance, which not only lowers the power of incoming fire moves, but also powers up our water move, allowing us to take down Growlithe with minimal damage taken. 
Arcanine comes out next. We outspeed and go for rain boosted water pulse, but it still survives somehow and goes for bite, which brings us to just above half. Blaine then hyper potions it, and we get a high roll on the next attack to KO it. In comes Ponyta next, which is an easy KO with Water Pulse, and as it turns out, the same goes for Rapidash as well, winning us our 7th badge. Taking two Fire Blasts from Arcanine and Rapidash could have been dangerous, so that was a strategy well worth the trouble. Seeing that we're now famous, and Bill decides to proposition us, and I have to use all my power to deny his advances, although the island getaway does sound enticing, I must admit. The eighth and final gym is the Viridian Gym, and being filled with fighting, rock, and poison types, Mewtwo carves a warpath straight to Giovanni. Given that the developers decided not to give Giovanni his Kangaskhan for this battle, I don't anticipate it being too much trouble. He leads with Rhyhorn, and I figure since we have our water combination still, might as well use it, as Rhyhorn gets obliterated by a Rain Dance boosted and Mystic Water boosted 4 times super effective Water Pulse, although it did hit us with Scary Face to drop our speed. Dugtrio then outspeeds us, but Earthquake does surprisingly little before we can drown it as well. Both Nidoqueen and Nidokings are easy KOs with Water Pulse as well, and even though the rain stopped on the last turn, Rhyhorn still has no chance against a Water Pulse. All 8 gym badges acquired, and it's almost time to take on the biggest challenge of the game. With more money in our pocket, I finally decide to commit to the game corner grind, getting over 9,000 coins. I decide to buy both the Ice Beam and Thunderbolt TMs, thinking those should cover our bases quite well. Our final major challenge before the Pokemon League is a rival battle with Blue on Route 22, where his team has become quite powerful. However, with amazing coverage now, we're able to one hit KO Pidgeot with Ice Beam. Blastoise comes out next, and I realized I only thought about Ice Beam for Pidgeot and forgot to actually teach Thunderbolt. However, he goes for Rain Dance on the first turn, Psychic does less than half surprisingly before another brings him into the red, and another bite doesn't do a whole lot before Psychic takes him down. Thankfully, he only had Rain Boosted Water Gun at best. The rain then actually works in our favor here, as we then eviscerate his Rhyhorn and Growlithe with super effective Water Pulse. In comes Execute next, and with Ice Beam we can now take care of it in a single blow. His final Pokemon is Alakazam, and our best move against it is also Ice Beam, which doesn't take it out, however, Karma absolutely comes through for us as he merely missed Disable. An embarrassing performance for Blue, if I'm honest. A long and treacherous journey through Victory Road brings us to the Pokemon League, and before entering, I make sure that we're all set with EV fulfillment, health items, TMs, etc. With that, it's time for the final challenge, the Indigo Plateau itself. The first Elite Four member is Lorelei, the Ice-type trainer. Her team is quite bulky, and I have a few worries about it. She leads with a Dugong, and I had taught Brawly Thunderbolt, and amazingly, despite her bulk, we actually one-hit KO it. Nice. Lapras then comes out next, and Thunderbolt brings it to a quarter before she then hits us with Confuse Ray. We do hurt ourselves on the next turn, and then Ice Beam does a good chunk of damage. We hit ourselves again on the next turn, then Surf brings us to a third. Dear Lord. Third time's the charm, though, as we take it out with another attack. That was a close one. Cloyster comes out next and protects, and we hit ourselves in confusion again. This is looking dangerous. She gets the double protect off, but we break out of confusion, and I had used recover here so we get a ton of health back before we can take it out with one Thunderbolt on the next turn. Slowbro then comes out and is also a one-shot, and then her final Pokemon comes out, Jinx. This thing I'm kind of worried about. It resists our stab moves, but I couldn't teach Brawly Flamethrower because we wouldn't be able to rotate the moves that we need. But I figured Thunderbolt could do a good neutral job nonetheless, and it does do right about half, but then she hits us with a 75% accuracy lovely kiss to put us to sleep. Yikes. She then hits us with three consecutive ice punches while we stay asleep, and we survive the third on just 10 HP and wake up just in time to get a recover off. Whew. Another Ice Punch brings us to 62 HP, and there's a dilemma here. Since Thunderbolt did just about half, there's a possibility we get a low roll and don't take it out, so I have to use a Recover, but she hits another lovely kiss. She then hits us with Ice Punch, and gets what I feared the most, a crit. She hits us again, and we survive on just 8 HP, and then wake up again to recover. Holy, this is nuts. She then hits us with Ice Punch again, and gets the freeze. No, why? How is this happening? We don't thaw out, and she hits us to just 15 HP, and I'm like, well, it's over. But then, she uses Double Slap. I think she ran out of Ice Punch power points, but still... 
but she only hits us three times, we survive on just three HP, and then use Recover. I use Recover again, we get put to sleep yet again, but now with only Double Slap she can't do much damage, so we can use the Thunderbolt and it does indeed take her down. That was absolutely nuts, one of the craziest battles I've ever seen, and an absolute miracle that we pulled it off. Next up is Bruno, the fighting type Elite Four member, and, well, I'm pretty sure we all knew how this was gonna go. Brawly completely sweeps through his entire team with Ice Beam on the Onyxes, and Psychic on his Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee, and Machamp. Poor guy. It's very rare he has good type coverage against opposing teams, but a Mewtwo of all things is definitely not one of those times. The third Elite Four member is Agatha, and in theory her team could be dangerous for a Psychic type, but only if it was slower, which Mewtwo is definitely not. We're able to outspeed and one-hit KO everything on our team with super effective Stab Psychic. It's not often that you see things like Golbat and Gengar getting outsped, but when it happens, it's exciting, as Agatha can be brutally annoying with status. The final Elite Four member is Lance, the Dragon Master, whose team is more so a flying type team than actual dragons. He leads with a Gyarados, and this is the entire reason why Thunderbolt was so important over Flamethrower, as it gives us a 4 times super effective way of taking this thing out in one hit and not risking something like Hyper Beam. From there, his remaining Pokemon are either weak or 4 times weak to Ice Beam, and Mewtwo even outspeeds Aerodactyl of all things, so we can one hit KO every single one of them. Thankfully, Lance doesn't yet have his Kingdra, as that could have caused some problems. It's time, the final challenge, the champion, Rival Blue. With his team now fully evolved and hypercharged, it's time to see how we stack up against it with the most powerful Pokemon in Kanto. He leads with his trusty Pidgeot, and I know we cannot risk a sand attack at all, so I go for Ice Beam right away to take it out, and thankfully it does. In comes Arcanine next, so I go for Psychic, but it survives on a quarter and uses Flamethrower, which does a surprising amount of damage, although we can outspeed and take it down with another attack. Blastoise comes out next, especially Defensive Beast, but now we have Thunderbolt, but it still survives it just in the red, and then hits us with a Hydro Pump, and whoa, that did way more damage than I thought, bringing us to just 21 HP in the red before our Citrus Berry, but another does the job. Alakazam is up next, but since we can even outspeed it, I go for Recover before Psychic hits us to half, but he gets the special defense drop. Oh no. Thunderbolt then does less than half, it hits us with another Psychic with our lowered special defense, and gets a crit, but we survive on just 4 HP. Holy sh**. Knowing I need to play it safe for his final Pokemon, I go for Recover a few times, and thankfully he doesn't crit us again, but then he uses Recover, so I hit him with two more Thunderbolts, and it seems he just ran out of power points, so a final attack does him in. Rhydon comes out next, which is thankfully a one-hit KO with Ice Beam, and his final Pokemon is Executor. This thing could be trouble, as Ice Beam is super effective, but it does have high special defense and HP. But amazingly, we do enough to finish him off and win the championship. Unreal. What a challenge this was. I wasn't sure what to expect from this at all, as it was a completely new type of hardcore Nuzlocke, but honestly, it was a ton of fun and brought about some unique and unexpected challenges for sure. All hail the mighty Mewtwo, who can indeed single-handedly beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Fire Red. I hope you had fun with the run, and if you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as it really does help a lot and grows our community. A huge thanks to my YouTube members and patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to support and get your name up here, the links are also down below. Drop a like down below to help the video out, and leave a comment letting me know what kind of run we should do next, and I'll see you guys for our next challenge video.